Burlesque Stripped Down, episode number nine. All right, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Burlesque Stripped Down. Today, I am thrilled to be bringing you an interview with a newcomer with a dark side. We have a fabulous young lady named Violent May. She's from Southwest England, and as I mentioned, she's got this nice dark side in there. She does some gore and we're really excited to kind of get to know her a little bit better. So welcome, Violent May. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm not too bad. How are you? Good. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you go ahead? We're just going to jump right into it. You can say hello, mm-hmm. kind of fill in any blanks from that intro and, and let us know a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, sounds cool. Um, so obviously you heard Velvet say I'm in a, based in the southwest of the UK. Um, I've been doing burlesque for about a year and a half now and I love it so much. Um, I've met so many wonderful people. Um, I would mostly do neo burlesque and gore and it's all very dark. I don't really do the whole glitter and rhinestones. I do the more <laughs> cake, <laughs> blood, and... <laughs> well, that's the great thing about burlesque, right, is yeah. that there's places for all of that, yeah. right? We have a lot of a lot of women who and men who do the very glittery and, and, and mm-hmm. fancy and fabulousness, mm-hmm. and then some of the rest of us who do a little bit, still fabulous, of course, yeah. but a little bit darker, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so what do you think, um, and this can be, all of these questions really can be burlesque related or um, performer related or really in general. What's the biggest misconception about you? Mostly probably my shyness. Um, I'm quite shy in person, so some people can obviously take that as rudeness, which (laughs) it's not. I just don't know how to talk to you, really. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of introversion can be misinterpreted that way. And so it's hard to kind of get over that, especially when you're dealing with extroverts and in a, in a, Mm -hmm. probably in a, in a realm like burlesque, a lot of people are very over the top and very outgoing. So I imagine that's a, that's a struggle to deal with. How do you, uh, do do you have any strategies for overcoming that? Have you been able to overcome that at all? Recently it's been, been getting better because of burlesque, um, in general life as well. Like I'm just, gain more confidence and things like that so I am slowly to start starting to be a bit more (laughs) talking to people I think it doesn't help though like obviously going on stage um, is something I can do easily but then talking to someone new is just like no (laughs) don't make me yeah there's (laughs) (laughs) there's different levels of it and of course I mean not to get too philosophical and, and everything but I don't think it's always necessary for people to change. You know, people always talk about like, you know, like, well, you should be more outgoing and there's no should around there. Right. You know, you are who you are and everybody else, you know, should, I guess, yeah. you know, learn to embrace that and kind of go along with it. And, and, you know, it's, it's all about embracing who you are and if other people don't like it, well, they can go screw themselves basically. <laughs> But I do understand, and especially when we're performing, you know, we're trying to get gigs and, and, and book shows and all of this. It can be a little difficult if you don't have, for me, for example, I love, I, I like talking to new people, but I'm just not a fan of just quote networking, right? Yeah. I like just having organic, just real conversations. And if I'm not in the mood, I'm not in the mood. I don't want to have to put on a face, yeah. you know? That's definitely how I feel as well. Like for just striking up a conversation if I wanted to rather than because I have to or Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm with you there. So you mentioned you've been in burlesque now for about a year and a half. Um, How did you kind of come to it? When did you know that it was something that you wanted to do? Um, Okay. So in January, 2013, I think it was um, where I'm studying Plymouth University. um, The the burlesque society became a thing. (laughs) Um, oh, yeah. there was, it was obviously a very small thing, but classes were starting to happen. And so I started going to the classes for a bit. And then I realized I'm also on a teaching course. <laughs> so I was like, well, I, d- I don't really know about the teaching and burlesque at the same time. I'll, I'll join the, s- the scene now and just see what happens kind of thing, rather than maybe doing a bit more, a few more classes than I should probably do before going on stage. But <laughs> uh, I've I, I had careful learning like <laughs> yeah I got That's myself great. out there really early but instead I've like learned a lot in a very short amount of time <laughs> so, well that's yeah that's fabulous I think that's a way to do it just kind of jump right into yeah. that 
Actually, that leads me to another question. I mean, you mentioned that you're a primary school teacher. Have you found any kind of discord between the two? I know there's been, you know, there was a story in the news recently. I think it was someone from America who was getting some backlash because of their, you know, burlesque and cabaret performance as a public school teacher. And I know Americans can be a little bit crazy about that kind of stuff. Have you had any issues or anything come up yet with that? Not yet. I almost did Good. in like my first in like after six months of doing it, um, I was almost reported to um, the course people on, at Plymouth Uni. Um, luckily, nothing became of it. But That's yeah, good. yeah, it was scary. And like my burlesque teacher is also um, a secondary school teacher, so uh, okay, I sort of I would ask her for advice and be just to how to protect yourself and things like that. Exactly. Because I mean, unfortunately, we have to protect ourselves. You know, Mm -hmm. there's so many misconceptions about things like burlesque that uh, one thing can just Mm -hmm. be blown way out of proportion. Like you you do see the few burlesque performers who are who do have the luxury of being like, yeah, I do burlesque and use both have don't have to have different Facebook profiles. They can be loud and proud about it, which is lovely. But for some of us, it's just not an option. (laughs) So when you started doing burlesque, was there a particular, maybe even before you did burlesque, did you go to any shows? Were there any performers or numbers that kind of inspired you to start going to those classes? I think it was just something I've been interested in for a while. Like, obviously, Dita Von Tee's made it very mainstream and very yeah, easy absolutely. to look up on YouTube and things like that. So I I've obviously knew about her. And then I had a few, like, burlesque friends as well, um... And then I just thought, no, actually, I quite like the idea of dressing up and going on stage and things like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I hear you. When I mean, I know when I came to it, I was like, why did I not find this sooner? Mm. This is all of my favorite things in one yeah. place. <laughs> or like just before that as well, I um, joined the steampunk, the British steampunk community. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I was like, dressing up is something I do already, but maybe I could do this on stage as well. <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to hear up a little bit about your hero. Tell me, can you tell me about who is your hero? I, it can be, again, burlesque related or performance or just in general. Probably a big hero of mine is my gran. Oh, it sounds a bit cliche, but... No, absolutely. Yeah. Tell us why. Um, she used to be a primary school teacher, which is probably why I want to do that. <laughs> um, and then, like, recently she... Um, She's like, what, got to be 84 and not that long ago took um, to the courts because she was getting 10 grand less in her pensions than a guy she used to work with. Oh, well, good Uh, for her. Yes, (laughs) Fran. Yes, absolutely. Fighting for that. That's great. So where, when you're creating your acts, where do you usually find your inspiration? Sometimes it can be just like, oh, I'll be listening to a song. And something will pop into my head and be like, no, that's an idea. That is definitely an idea that can happen. <laughs> um, yeah. Others, it may be like, oh, I quite like like um, my Alice in Wonderland act, which is probably my signature routine currently. Um, it's something kind of that I always like. I love Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and was like, no, I want to do a routine inspired by Alice in Wonderland and decided to draw from there what's your journey where do you go from there you have kind of one element and then do you usually kind of um think about it a lot for a long time or do you jump right into getting started um yeah I'll think about it for a long time <laughs> and then yeah. maybe try and find music that will kind of work with it um and then start costuming it or if once I like thought about the music maybe <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but normally it is just like, oh, that's a good song. I think I could do this to it. Absolutely. I'll never forget. It was after one of my, probably one of my first burlesque classes that I, t- not, not in the, fr- in, within the first six months or so, um, being on the Metro, I have a vivid memory of being on the Metro and this random song came up and I was like, this is it. This yeah. Is, you know, and, and it's <laughs> probably not something I would have decided on had I been at home trying to brainstorm, but because I was in that mood, I was in that place Mm-hmm. after the burlesque class, and then this music happened to come on, I was like, you know what, this is perfect. Yeah, 
Well, you've had a fairly short burlesque journey so far. I mean, not too short, a year and a half, certainly respectable. Um, what's been, has there been a worst moment so far? Have you, have you had a time when you've just kind of been like, I don't know if this is right for me. I, this is not happening the way I want it to or anything like that. Um, definitely like my first show, like, oh my God, it was, it was terrible. Like, really? um, it was in Taymouth, um, which is a small town in Devon, um, in the Southwest. And it was a charity gig run by basically a load of, um, middle-aged men who were also in a band. It was all emails were kind of fairly professional. We thought they knew, I thought they knew what they were doing. And then oh. I got there and <laughs> my, um, burlesque teacher, um, fantastic. Miss Fanny was there. So it was kind of good in that way. And my boyfriend was there as well. who's really supportive, but like, uh-huh. um, the stage kittens, they were drunk. Um, we didn't get to sound check. None of us got to sound check. Um, the changing area meant was good, but we had to like push through a load of people. Um, one of the performers were drunk. It was just like, it was just like hell on earth. And like at the end of the night, I was like, not sure if I want to 100% do this again. And then I absolutely, yeah, and then I like slept on it pretty much and was like, so it was just like a bad experience for like the first time, but I know it'll get better the second time round, which it did. And I did performed in London the second time round in like behind my last infinities, which was so oh, much wow. better. <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's great. Yeah. I mean, like you said, for your first time, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's, that's a rough kind of initiation mm-hmm. into it, but then again, trial by fire, right? Once you've been Pretty through much, that, yeah. you can do just about anything. Yeah. That was like a rock bottom, how not to run a burlesque show in every possible way. <laughs> like, you you now you can teach a class what not to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could have only gotten better from that. Yeah. And you said you went home. Did it really kind of give you pause? Did you really have some soul searching that night? Kind of not sure if this is something you wanted to do or were you, was it still kind of just a fleeting moment and you were still pretty certain? Um, yeah, I definitely like went home with like not 100% sure on that front kind of thing. Um, and then I like kind of slept on it pretty much and woke up being like, no, I still want to do this. Good. Well, that's good. And so kind of taking the flip side of that coin, have you had a particular best moment where you were just ecstatic and just so sure of, of what you were doing and, and how good it was for you? Um, definitely. Like during summer or burlesque shows, well, just generally shows and gigs like that, gigs don't happen because people want to be outside. It's festival season. It's, it's just a fact kind of thing in the entertainment industry in general, I think. Um, not much happens in summer. So during September, um, it was the Burlesque Society Freshers Showcase thing. And like just after several months of not being able to perform, I, I pro- felt like I smashed that show. I got to perform among friends and things like that um, as well, which which is always nicer, to be honest. <laughs> and Absolutely. Yeah, it, it was just one of those things like, nailed it. <laughs> It's true. We do get that. That is the nice thing about being a performer, really, of any sort. Is there are there's a lot of lows, but there's also a lot of highs. That kind of that adrenaline after a good yeah. show. I mean, it really just gets in your blood, yeah, and it definitely. really you have that euphoria, especially as you said, I mean, performing with friends. And that's one of the great things about burlesque is that often mm-hmm. you can kind of can't always choose who you work with, but you often get kind of this really great group of performers around you. And often you can get some friends in there too sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Like with the Burlesque Society, I I really don't think I would be where I was without the girls there. Like we give each other feedback on routines. If we have any advice to give or want advice, they're normally there and will suggest something. and, And we all feel like we're on the same kind of Le- well, level. It sounds really crude, but <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah, you're on the same same place in your journey. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> right? that's a nice way of saying it. Like there we level. go. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Because it's all about a different, you know, this journey, and and that's the thing is that we all kind of take different paths to go along it. But um, so the burlesque society is it just a school or is it kind of a troupe as well? Do you do professional shows and everything? Um, with started to do a few professional shows um it's only been going for two and a bit years now 
And like the first year, it just it didn't really do much because the chair head person, um, she unfortunately had to go into a hospital for several months. So we didn't have that many socials or anything like that. Um, second year was way better though. Like, um, we had a different chair who was a bit, well, a bit better in terms of not being ill, which, you know, helps. <laughs> True. Thinking, yeah. yeah. We had like social, we've been having socials going out and things like that. Um, classes are running more regularly, shows and things like that. And now the third year, now that we all have been a bit more trained up in how to do certain techniques in burlesque, like glove removal, stock and peel, and have uh-huh. performed. Now we're starting to do a few more professional shows. It's cool to see how different, you know, different troops and schools kind of uh, yeah. how they develop as well. Because like we said, I mean, there's performer journeys and there's also the journey of, of kind of um, groups as well. Because um, I, I perform with a troupe mm. in Paris called Burlesque Moulin. And we have a we have kind of the journey as well. We're a school, but we're also a professional troupe and kind of evolves and changes as well. Oh, that's cool. Well, now we've gotten some of the big questions out of the way. So I kind of want to move on to a little bit more fun section. This is the section I like to call pick your poison. Okay. Okay. Very straightforward. I've got eight different questions, secret questions, you might say. And I just need you to pick a number from one to eight. And these are super just kind of fun questions to kind of get to know you a little bit better. So pick a question, number one through eight. Uh, Five. Number five. All right. What did you care about most when you were 10 years old? Hmm. <laughs> Think back to 10-year-old. <laughs> uh, what was she the most passionate about? Probably reading. That's why my eyesight's shot now, really. <laughs> oh, really? That's great. Were you one of those secret, you know, just reading all the time? Yeah, reading it. Supposed to yeah, reading in the dark. Um, I was so, the same. Yeah, and now my eyesight's really bad. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Do you think it was because of that? Does it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like, so what kind of books did you read when you were 10? Um, series of Unfortunate Events was definitely up there. Um, ah, but, uh, yeah. I can't remember really what else. <laughs> I know for me, and I'm a bit older than you, so I, I don't know if you would know, but I, I did, um, I was always reading a lot of the Babysitter's Club. Did Vaguely you guys have that? heard of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. If, I, I don't know, between England, or between the UK and, and the US, I don't know, and also with the age difference, I'm not sure, but I was always, I know my mom, she always jokes, even now, about how it was a punishment for me to have to put my book down, you know, mm. at the dinner table or something. <laughs> Usually you have to, like, try to get your yeah. kids to <laughs> do you still read a lot or is it hard with your bad eyes um no I definitely still read a lot great just started to kind of get back into reading because of trying to find the time between uni and burlesque have you converted over to a kindle or an e-reader at all or are you still yeah I'm, I'm still paper book like, still paper book I prefer mostly but when I'm traveling it's hard but yeah I see the point from traveling but at home uh, where I do normally read it's like no <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather have it physically. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, our next little section, again, super quick, we're going to do a this or that. So I'm going to give you two options, and you can answer kind of as, as quickly as you can with what you prefer. And now remember, before we start, you can interpret these however you like, okay? okay. There's a few that could be interpreted, but I am not putting anything in your head ahead of time. Interpret okay. them however you want, okay? Yep. <clears throat> Let's get this started. All right, pizza or pasta? Pizza, definitely Pizza. Oh, wow, she's ecstatic about that. I'm one of those students who's like, no, I have to have pizza at least once a week. (laughs) I get withdrawal symptoms. (laughs) (laughs) All right, how about day or night? Hmm. Depends what's going on in the daytime. Uh, we got to pick one. Uh, Probably daytime. Really? Even for this dark side of the summer? Yeah. (laughs) How about city or country? City, definitely city. Top or bottom? What? (laughs) Um, Top or bottom? Again, interpret however you like. Top or bottom? Okay. Um, Bottom, I guess, if we're going down the kinky route. (laughs) (laughs) You you can go there. Mountains or ocean? Mountains. Classic or neo-burlesque? Neo-burlesque, definitely. Comedy or tragedy? Tragedy. (laughs) <laughs> Superman or Batman? Batman, but Marvel on the whole. <laughs> I, I agree, one hundred percent. I'm with you there. Uh, wine or beer? Craft beer. 
<laughs> She's a classy lady. Right? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep or sex? Ah, both at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if that's usually looked on as that, a good thing. Or, yeah. But. <laughs> Trying to kill someone's self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, well, I'll let you have both. For right. he- heels or bare feet? Bare feet. And last but not least, <clears throat> the UK or France? UK... Uh, okay, I mean, it's kind of a given, right? I suppose. Much, yeah. Have you been able to p- travel to Paris uh, much or perform there or anything? Um, I went when I was 12, and I can't really remember it that much, but I want to go again because um, I'm overdue a visit, really. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you should definitely come. You know, we can we can hang out for Burlesque Moulin. You can come to some of our classes and our shows and everything like that. It'd be great. Oh, sounds cool. Yeah, very good. All right. And by the way, when I was talking about top surface, I don't know what you were thinking. I was talking about just your bunk beds. You know, if you want to climb up to the top. Oh, bunk. okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to throw people off too much with that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before we say goodbye, um, I'm just curious because this is actually kind of a, a question out of my own curiosity because I always find it's really interesting to stay up to date on burlesque news and events and everything, but I find that it's hard to find kind of one central location for that. Where do you go usually to stay up to date on burlesque news? Uh, There's a Facebook group called um, the Big Sister, Little Sister Burlesque Project, which is really good. Um, There's events that you can find being posted. Um, You can ask for advice there. People will share news articles there. Um, as well if you're just generally interested in burlesque and would like maybe not to perform but to go to events then there is also a facebook group called burlesque events which is just loads and loads of people posting events um pretty much across the world normally in the uk or in the u.s Ever since I've joined that big sister, little sister one, um, it's really become one of my favorites. I really, I think the quality there is really, <laughs> is really high of postings and everybody's really, really supportive. It's really great. Yeah, so. definitely. Like, and then within the Southwest as well, we've got um, the Southwest Burlesque Collective, which is pretty much the same thing, just small on a smaller scale. There's a Southwest UK, which is pretty cool. Excellent. Very good. Well, and just for everybody listening, I will um, list some links to all of these things mm-hmm. in our show notes for the face, uh, for this uh, episode mm-hmm. as well. So if you go to our show notes page at burlesquestripteddown.com, you will see all of the links for any of um, and all of these Facebook groups as well as for this next question. May, do you have a YouTube video that we should check out? We're always looking to find kind of new inspiration and see new videos of performances. Do you have any videos either on YouTube or elsewhere that we should kind of check out to see? Um, definitely. I'm um, going to give a shout out to my burlesque society gals <laughs> um, and choose. Basically, it's more of a channel rather than like a specific video. Um, right. But Colin T. Head films pretty much every single one of our shows um you can find people like Joni Love, Lara Cinnabar, Marie Tart on that um who are obviously burlesque society people they're really cool they're, they're really awesome. good honest <laughs> <laughs> that's great perfect well I'll go ahead and link that up like I said in those show notes there so we'll be able to check out all those videos and give you some some good likes and comments on those as well <laughs> all right so before we say goodbye just tell us a little bit how can we keep up with you and get in contact with you if we're if we're interested in hearing more um I have a Facebook page um www.facebook.com forward slash violent dot may dot burlesque um, where you can find me and pretty much my events. Um, I have do photo put photos on there um, from photo shoots. Um, my YouTube page, Game Violent May. Um, Perfect. And if you have a Fet Life account, which I know is few and far between, <laughs> feel free to message me and add me there and be like, yeah, I listen to your show. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm-hmm. perfect. See, we're all about connecting people because that's what I really wanted to mm-hmm. do here with the last strip down is kind of give us more connections outside of just Facebook groups, which are great, but give us a little bit more um, to get in touch with each mm-hmm. other from around the world. Yeah. 
Well, May, thank you so <laughs> much for being on. Thank you for having me. And there you have it, ladies and gents, Miss Violet May, fresh out of the UK. As you know, here on Burlesque Strip Down, December is all about being authentic, and it was fabulous to have uh, May on the show to be able to talk about her journey so far. If you missed it, we had a, um, a really important episode, I think, on last Thursday. Our Hot Tips episode was all about being authentic, in the, specifically in the realm of the imposter syndrome. If, you've, if you're not familiar with the imposter syndrome, you definitely want to go listen to that. You can find that at burlesquestripdown.com slash imposter. This Thursday, I'll be talking a little bit about defining success and how that needs to be a very personal thing that we, uh, we do for ourselves, figuring out what success looks like for us. In the meantime, please do, as I've been mentioning, send me an email, especially this month. I would really love to hear what you think of the podcast, particularly with all of the authenticity work that we're doing. It's velvet at burlesquestripdown.com. And, of course, please share these episodes with your friends if you're getting something out of it, if you're enjoying them. Tell everybody you know. Helps us out a little bit. I will talk to you on Thursday, so make sure that you stay authentic and stay sexy. Yeah.